Right, what's going on? So it's been a couple weeks. Um, I should have this video filmed, edited, and up by tonight. I'll probably make it public tomorrow or something. Something a little bit different here. Um, I actually want to um, do one of these Q&A videos again. It's been fucking uh, a couple, probably almost a couple years. Um, and the last time I did it, I asked for questions and I never fucking made the answers video. So this is an invitation for all of you to put questions in the comments. I'm not going to answer all of them, so make your question good. I am going to try and answer as many as I can, as quickly as I can, but uh, there's no way I'd be able to get through all of them, so just make your questions good and your question will be answered. So do that and um, yeah, here we go. All right, first, uh, we're actually listening to uh, some brutal death metal in the background. Viral load, backwoods bludgeoning, sick hicks from the sticks, man. Absolutely one of my favorite death metal, brutal death metal projects, um, pretty much to have ever existed. Something about this album specifically, man, just reminds me of being fucking 10th grade. There's no reason it should have taken me this long to get it, but I have it now, and I've played it fucking a million times. So, yeah, really cool. All right, let's look at some seven inches. First thing I got here is uh, Sargeist, The Lair of Necromancy. So this is an EP that was released in 2011, and this had a couple new tunes, uh, new for the time anyway, Nightmares and Necromancy, and The Moon Growing Colder. Both of these were on the Rebirth of a Cursed Existence um, compilation, but I love Sargeist, they're one of my favorites, so kind of wanted to uh, have the EP. I'd like to get everything I can from this band, but um, some of it is a little bit pricey. There's the front cover right there. It's just um, the logo and some bones. There's the back, uh, a couple of skulls. Uh, and you have right one and right two put out on uh, Hospital Records. Inner Sheet's quite cool. Uh, you just got the lyrics for the songs and uh, some really nice pictures. Very cool. And record is just black, labels are simple. Very nice. So this thing is musically as sargeist as it gets. Uh, great riffs, especially on the second song. Love it to death, you guys will too. Check that out, that's Sargeist with Layer of Necromancy. All right, next up, this is something I like a little bit less. This is the Black Citadel split with Basmu. There's no title for it as far as I'm aware. I think this was like 300 copies or something like that. Um, uh, Black Citadel, I've made it pretty clear that they were done. Um, but this is a new Black Citadel song that's on here entitled Luciferian Scrolls. So I'm not sure if Black Citadel is like no longer disbanded or active or whatever. But like I said, this uh, new song doesn't appear on anything they've done in the past. And I actually bought this for the Black Citadel song. And I gotta say, man, I, I was pretty unimpressed. I listened to it a few times and I, I just can't take anything from it. I I'm not sure if I've been in the wrong mood, uh, which I know isn't probably the case because I, I still listen to things that sound like this, and even the Black Citadel compilation I have is fantastic. But something about the song on this, I just, I'm not into it. I actually like the Basmu side more, uh, the song Necromantic Channeling, which is a bit more just sort of straightforward, like um, almost ambient black metal maybe. Whatever man, you can't love it all I guess. Uh, there's the front cover, it's uh, like a cemetery. It's the back cover, uh, Amor Fati, Les Fleurs du Mal. Uh, I don't know, that's probably not how you say it. Uh, you got the project it's right here song titles that shit you get a little sheet that has the information for each project on either side very cool and the record itself is just black labels are simple so not at all to say that this is bad um i just was hoping i would like the black citadel stuff more given that is what i bought this for and shipping from canada with the the seven inch itself it was you know a lot more than i normally pay for one seven inch anyways but Whatever, man. Um, check it out if you're interested. That's Black Citadel split with Bass Move. Alright, let's talk about some 12 inch records. This first thing here is something I am so fucking happy to own. This is Inquisition with Demonic Ritual in Unholy Blackness. 
So, uh, you guys have probably seen this sort of going around recently. It's fucking glossy. This is a live record from Inquisition, um, which, as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been a live record previously. Now, this one is an official bootleg. I'm still not sure what official bootleg means. Dude, this thing is fucking awesome. Recorded in 2010 in Italy. Yeah, Italy. Um, it was actually recorded on my birthday in 2010. Very cool. Now, for some reason, when this was put up on Season of Mist, and there was like a little description, uh, and even I saw the same thing on Facebook as well, uh, they were basically saying that it's super raw. They were making it sound almost unlistenable. I bought it anyway because I like Inquisition. I got it, put it on the turntable, and this thing sounds fantastic. I mean, it's this is actually now probably one of my favorite live records that I own. Easy. The vocals are fucking awesome as usual. They're very loud. The guitar, the drums, you can pick everything apart. It's not a wall of noise. It sounds great, and there's some great tunes on here. Even better than just that, you kind of get uh, a bit of Dagon talking in between some of the songs. Um, and right before the song, Desolate Funeral Chant, uh, yeah, and he talks with a funny voice. If you've, if you've never, like, um, if you've never seen Inquisition live, um, he's, he's like, thank you. It's always great to be back. He basically says, we have a new album coming out next month. Uh, this is a song from that Desolate Funeral Chant. Really, really fucking cool. And Desolate Funeral Chant is one of my favorite Inquisition songs, but it's easily my favorite performance on this live record. Even better, on the B side of this thing, uh, there's a part where <laughs> Dagon, he, he, he says something along the lines of, I need another axe, I broke a string. Uh, so, <laughs> it's just fucking awesome, man. I love this thing, it sounds great, there's great songs on it. Uh, no, absolutely no fucking complaints. So there's the front cover, questionable artwork, uh, which is fine. Sorry for the fucking gloss. There's the back, you got a picture of the members, song titles. Uh, I do have number 97 of 300. So I'm not sure how something like this differs from an official release. I don't know all the technicalities of running labels, putting out records, I have no idea. I'm sure it's a very small difference and doesn't really make much of a difference. But I mean, Season of Mist sold, sold some through their fucking web store. Inquisition was posting about this thing, so... Fuck it, man, I don't know. So this was limited to 300 copies and it was... 70 of them were on like a marbled red and then 230 were just on this uh, black vinyl. Both these labels look the same, so uh, you get it. So absolutely one of the best sounding live records in my collection, man. I love this thing. I've played it like half a dozen times in the fucking six, seven days I've had it. Who knows if there's going to be a repress, because like I said, this is a bootleg. So if you find this, fucking, for the love of God, grab it. Uh, awesome. Inquisition, Demonic Ritual, and Unholy Blackness. <laughs> All right, next up, uh, this doesn't come with anything. It's real simple, so it's gonna be quick to show, but this is a fantastic album. This is Gorgoroth with Antichrist. Turn my camera a bit, help with the glare. Obviously, uh, we all know Gorgoroth. I've only talked about Gorgoroth like once before, maybe twice before on this channel. I have a couple of the other albums, um, but I really, this is kind of where it's at for Gorgoroth. This and Pentagram that came out before it. This is the second album from 1996. And like I said, this was before Gorgoroth fell victim to some really bad lineup changes. And what, what I think is cool about this album is that the songs alternate vocalists uh, between Hat and Pest. I would say that Hat is regarded as the, the best vocalist that, that Gorgoroth ever had. I probably agree, because they're on like their fifth vocalist now, and it's getting a little bit tragic. But this was still right in the prime. Uh, Hat is a fantastic vocalist. Pest is a great vocalist, too. Uh, Frost played on this album. I know uh, Grimm, who was on the cover for Pure Holocaust, uh, he joined the band right after this album. And I think Destroyer something is, is right after this album. I, I don't know. But uh, really, most Gorgoroth is pretty good. I don't like pretty much any of the Gaul shit. But uh, this album is one of the best, man. So really fucking cool. Six tunes on this thing. Uh, the song Gorgoroth, which is the last song on side A, is probably my favorite. I like that there's like actually like sort of like almost clean vocals in that song. I'm glad uh, Soul Sailor repressed this. Uh, there's the back right there. Uh, you got Infernus in here, you got the song titles, all that shit, Soul Cellar. They put a fucking sticker 
of the barcode over the barcode. I was luckily able to get it off. I didn't damage the cover or anything like that, but it does make it stick to the fucking inner, like the plastic sleeve I keep it in. So I uh, opted for the white vinyl. Very cool, 500 copies. Yeah, good shit. So if you know Norwegian black metal, you know this album. There's no reason for me to fucking talk about it. Catch your riffs, great vocals, you get the idea. Gorgoroth, Antichrist. Up. This is some American black metal. Eisenblast, Screams in Cold Silence. Uh, I got this from Reaper from uh, Hellcast. Yeah, I've been I've been helping him out with some shit. So uh, he sent me some shit, and uh, this is one of these things. This is probably my favorite thing that he sent musically. Uh, it's absolutely absolutely fucking fantastic. You got super trancey riffs. Very very distant, almost howly style vocals. And I would say even most interestingly, there's guitar solos in these songs, uh, which for black metal is pretty fucking rare. Uh, so musically it's fantastic, vocally it's fantastic. I really, really love this thing. I think these guys formed in like 2010 or something. This album came out last year, 2017. Uh, I think they're from Michigan, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, whatever. Uh, good shit. Uh, so there's the album cover right there. They got a really fucking nice logo. Uh, I like the album cover. Very cool. There's the back. Eisenblast. Screams of Cold Silence. More art. You got the song titles right here. Printed in our sheet right there. You just got the logo. Song lyrics and shit there. And this is just on black vinyl. Uh, limited strangely to 309 copies. Yeah, man. This is, what, this is the one on here I would imagine most of you have not heard. Uh, so if you haven't heard this, really give this a shot. There's no way you won't like it. So that's Eyes and Blast, Screams in Cold Silence. All right, finally here. Normally I wouldn't show two records from the same band, but I was kind of instructed to do so, so uh, I'm okay with it. So these next two uh, are gonna encompass the first four demos of this particular band, and I have been on a big fucking kick of these guys lately. This is Argo Slint. Um, this thing is just titled 1990 to 1994, the first three demos. So this is a compilation of the first three demos, obviously. The first one from 1991, titled The Entity. The second demo from 1992, entitled Bastard Son of a Thousand Horse and the third demo from 1994, The Imperial Clans. Strangely though, they're kind of out of order. The first demo and the third demo are on the first disc, and the second demo is on the second. Um, I, I assume the reason they did that is because the second demo is a lot longer, so it, it actually took up a whole record. That way they didn't have to break it up between discs. I get it, but uh, it is a little bit strange. So this thing was put out on Drakkar Productions. Fantastic quality, man. This thing is heavy, it's nice. Really fucking cool artwork, as you can see here. I uh, love it. Argus has got a great logo as well. There's the back with all the information. There's an old show flyer right there, which is kind of fucking crazy. Uh, and again, there's the uh, song titles right there. So you got the first and third demos and the second one. You can see it's a lot longer. This is a gatefold. There's no fucking way you're reading those lyrics. Look how tiny those motherfucking lyrics are. Yeah, just uh, additional artwork. You got the original covers for the demos. Very nice. Just a uh, black vinyl. It's a song, titles, shit like that. Very cool. So, if you guys know Argus Lint, you know every fucking song is a riff machine. What's weird about Argus Lint is it, it almost borders on not being death metal musically. Vocally, 100%, this is death metal. Musically, though, it almost sounds more like just heavy metal or maybe power metal with, you know, a death metal edge. But, um, you know, some people could argue that this borders on not being death metal. I call it death metal because it's just easier, but uh, man, this thing is so fucking good. But each demo does get progressively more polished than the last one. Um, so the Imperial Clans is the most recent one from 1994. That probably has the best sound quality, but uh, they all have a sort of charm to them. I think you can still get this through Hell's Headbangers, and if you can, fucking Grab it, man. Absolutely no excuses. You gotta check this thing out. Argus Lent, first three demos. So 
we just talked about the first three demos. This right here is the fourth. This is Arsenal of Glory. This probably has one of my favorite songs um, from Argus Lynn on it, Hymns of Conquest. Absolutely fantastic, man. Again, it, do it almost doesn't sound like death metal musically, but it's just fantastic, man. And lyrically, it's actually quite interesting. It's almost like you, because I know a lot of you guys probably know Argus Lynn and think racist. Well, a lot of these lyrics, they could be interpreted that way, but it almost seems more historical. Lots of mentions of the New World, um, and, you know, like, uh, it, it even mentions, like, sailing across the Atlantic and shit like that. It almost seems more about history and a, a very dark time in history, and it, it focuses on that specifically, and it seems very unapologetic, which I love. I would say Argus Lynn is very concerned with you learning American history. Argus Lynn just wants what's best for you. Weird artwork. There's the back. You have six tunes on this thing. Really cool artwork on the back here as well. Again, Dracar Productions. I think this originally came out in 1996, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Printed in her sleeve here. Uh, there's one side with an image there. I like this right here. It says, dedicated to the diabolical death metal Argus soldiers who still worship sickness and adore the impure. And the labels are like close-ups of uh, the artwork. Very cool. I think the current drummer of Grimbalow's Key is actually the current vocalist of Argus Lynn, but Argus Lynn hasn't done anything in almost 10 years now, so I'd like to see this band come back. I'd like to see a, another full length or, or something. As long as they still got the spark, I want to hear more, so... Uh, for the love of God, check this shit out if you haven't heard it. Argus Lynn, Arsenal of Glory. Alright, oh, fucking hell, this is gonna be a lot to edit. This is a lot longer than it should be, and I don't want it to be. So that's it. Uh, fucking, that's five more 12 inch records, a couple more 7 inch records in the books. I want to fucking get back on track with this shit because it seems like it's just an indefinite hiatus in between each video. Don't forget to put your questions in the um, in the comments here. I'm going to give it probably a week or so and then I'll have an answer video for you. But whatever man, uh, thanks for sticking around and uh, see you guys soon. Later. There is a